Let's worship him. Let's give him glory. Let's praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let him hear your voice. Tell him you love him. Tell him you appreciate him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Blessed the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Give him glory. Give him honor. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. It's worthy. It's worthy to be praised. Worthy to be adored, worthy to be magnified. Praise Him. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Lift your voice to the Almighty. Go rest okay, see your Lord and Lagbara. And say, Father, so Baba. Arise today. The day lonely. And fight for me. Kyo see ja for me. Open your mouth and cry on. Nanura kyo keto. Arise, O Lord. Ide olua. Fight for me. Ja for me. Fight for my family. Ja for be me. Fight for your church. Fight for Nigeria. Arise, O Lord. And fight for me. Fight for my family. Fight for your church. Fight for Nigeria. Arise, O Lord. And fight for me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The God of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war, his mercy endured forever.
God of Isaac, God of Jacob, the Lord of hosts, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the Lord who had never lost a war. Glory be to your holy name. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Today, Lord, for all your children who are gathered here and all those who are watching all over the world, arise, O Lord. Fight our battles for us. Give us victory. Give us permanent victory. Arise for our families. Arise for your church. Arise for our nation. Just arise, O oh Lord, and fight for us. And give us permanent victory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Unless someone shout hallelujah. And then shake hands with two or three people. Prophesy to them. And say your victory will be permanent. Your victory will be permanent. And then you may please be seated. We want to thank the Almighty God for making it possible for you to gather here this year. You couldn't gather like this last year uh, because of uh, election. We don't want anybody to think you have gather together for a campaign. And today God will do double for you. What you would have done last year plus what he wants to do this year he will give you double today. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 2, and then verse 7. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1, 2, and 7. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt Hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Amen. Amen. And all this blessing shall come on thee Amen. and overtake thee Amen. if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Verse 7. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Like we shared with those of you who are the Holy Ghost service on Friday. Because today we want to talk briefly about victory without a fight. Life is war. From the moment of birth 
Till death. As a matter of fact, some people began their own war before they were born. It took a miracle for them not to be aborted. It is a miracle that many of us were not still birth. Uh, the moment the baby is born, he begins to cry. <laughs> because the baby knows the war is on. And the Bible said the last enemy to be conquered is death. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 26. 1 Corinthians 15, 26. Sickness is war. The Bible calls sickness affliction. James chapter 5, verse 13. James 5 verse 13 the doctors will tell you that God himself knows in advance that there might be an occasion for your body to fight and so he built warriors into your blood they call them leukocytes. Anytime something goes wrong with your body, the warriors inside began to fight. It is in the process of fighting that the temperature begins to rise. When there is a cut, the blood will rush there to prevent uh, infiltrators from coming and very quickly the blood will try to provide a shield and so that's why they call it blood clot. The blood will want to clot to prevent invaders from coming. It is when the soldiers inside can no longer cope. That's when we say the fellow broke down. Business is war. Every day you go to the market, you want to sell. Several others also want to sell. Serious competition all the time. As a matter of fact, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. Proverbs 22, verse 7. Says the rich rules over the poor. You'll be amazed how many rich people don't want the poor to become rich. You'll be amazed at those people who want you to remain poor. One fellow said once, if everybody becomes rich, who is going to be house help? I asked him, will you want your own child to be a house help? He couldn't answer my question. I decree this morning, all those who want you to die, poor. God will surprise them. When you consider all those people, 
who are constantly speaking about your ways, God's own ways of making you rich. who are speaking again. You will observe that all of them are rich people. They have made it, they now want you to stay down. But this morning, God will give you victory. Amen. Now, life is war. And when you go to war, there are possibilities. Either you win or you lose. If you are fighting against God, then you know you have lost even before you begin. In Exodus chapter 14, you can read the story from the beginning to the end. Exodus 14, from the beginning to the end, Pharaoh warred against Israel. And the Bible said God fought for Israel. Fought against Egypt. And Egypt lost the battle. The second thing is that God can be neutral. God is not fighting against you. But it's neutral. If it's neutral, you will lose. In Judges chapter 16, from verse 18 to 21, Judges 16, 18 to 21, God did not fight against Samson. He merely left him alone. And the result is the enemy finished him. I've told you before, my father used to tell me when, when he was alive, he said when the lion wakes up in the morning, he prays a prayer. God, show me the animal I will eat today. And then leave the two of us alone. Don't help me. Don't help him. He knows that if God would just leave that animal alone, it's a finished uh, food. If the devil is ever to pray, thank God he won't pray. He will say, God, show me the fellow I will destroy today. And leave the two of us alone. I pray for every one of you here. God will never leave you alone. And then the third possibility is for God to fight for you. And when God is fighting for you, victory is certain. If God is on your side, if he's the one fighting the battle for you, then you get what we call victory without a fight. Like Deuteronomy 28, that we read this morning, in verse 7, he said, the, the enemies that come against you will be smitten before your face. You are not the one who will smite them. You will just see them coming. And then you see them falling. He said they will come against you one way and flee seven ways. That is victory without a fight. And I am believing the Almighty God for at least three people here today. Myself, my wife, and someone else. That from now on, we will have victory without a fight. Amen. 
God can give you healing without medicine. I have said it that when the forces, the soldiers in you can no longer cope. That's when doctors begin to give you medicine. The medicine is to aid the soldiers inside to fight the invaders. But the Almighty God can heal you without medicine. In Second Kings chapter five, from verse one to fourteen. Second Kings five, from verse one to fourteen. God told Naaman, just obey me. Go and wash seven times. And your leprosy will be gone. He obeyed God completely. Like Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says, he obeyed completely. When he came out the seventh time, the Bible says, there was not even a scar left. God can heal you without medicine. In John chapter 5, verse 2 to 9, John 5, 2 to 9, at the pool of Bethesda, the man had been sick for 38 years. All that God did, he spoke a word. Get up, take your bed and go. And instantly, he was healed. In Matthew chapter 8, from verse 5 to 13, Matthew 8, from verse 5 to 13, the Bible tells us that when Jesus was going to the house of the centurion to go and heal the servant, the centurion said, you don't have to come, just speak a word. And my servant shall be made whole. And God spoke a word. And the servant was made whole. I am here representing the Almighty God this morning. And I'm speaking a word to somebody here. You won't even know sickness again. Some time ago, they brought a girl from Akure. Young lady. And she had a big lump in her breast. And the doctor said, this is cancer. And that the only solution is to cut off the breast. And the girl said, I'm not even yet married. The fellow who has two breasts I can't find a husband. You want to cut off mine? What's going to follow? So she insisted she must come for prayer. And the Almighty God said, just tell her. Her faith has made her whole. Your faith will make you whole today. She went down from my office. Before getting into the car that brought her, she checked. And the lump has disappeared. She came back to me upstairs. Excited. Daddy, Daddy, it has gone. And then she has a funny question. Where has he gone to? I said, where did he come from? Everything the enemy had introduced into your body. We go back to saying that this morning, Jesus name. God 
God can give you prosperity without a struggle. He can set you up for financial breakthrough. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 16, 1 Kings 17, from verse 8 to 16. The Almighty God told us of a widow who had only one meal left and sent a servant, a servant to her and told the woman, I know you say you have only one meal left. Put God first. Do my own first. She did. And she never, never was hungry again. While, while everybody was groaning in famine, she was getting fatter. The, the face of the child was shining because God set her up. Later on, Jesus was referring to the story. He said there were many widows in the land. But God chose one and gave her victory over poverty. God will set somebody up here for victory today. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, from verse 6 to 15, 2 Chronicles 1, from verse 6 to 15, the Bible told you about Solomon, who offered a thousand bond offerings. And then God paid him a visit. By the time God finished with him, the Bible says, in his time, gold and silver became as ordinary stones. As I've told some of you before, the first time I read that story, the first time that I read that story, I said, God, I don't understand. What gave Solomon the urge to give you a thousand bond offering? There must be a secret behind this. And the Bible showed me, the Almighty God showed me in 2 Samuel chapter 12. From verse 24 to 25. 2 Samuel 12. 2 Samuel chapter 12. From verse 24 to 25. That from the day Solomon was born. God loved him. He loved him. He, so he set him up. He asked him to do what somebody, nobody else had ever done before. So that he can become richer than anybody who had ever been born before. I've shared with you the story. Something that happened to me. Years ago when we were, we were just... Workers in the church. When Papa said, all workers should wait one Sunday. He said the church had a great need. And the need must be met the following that week immediately. He said, all of us should go and close our accounts and bring the money to the church. Well, so we went home. My wife and I, we closed our savings accounts. These are the only accounts we have. <laughs> and the money there wasn't much. Then we obeyed and took the money to the church. The following Sunday, Papa said the workers should wait. We waited. And he said, the need has been met. 
Oh, we all rejoice. Then he asked, By the way, how many of you close your account like I said? I raised my hand. My wife raised her hand. I looked around. There was nobody else. So I began to say, Oh, it looks as if I had received madness with this religion. And God spoke to me. He said, son, you are not mad. I'm setting you up. So that when I take you to where I'm going to take you, nobody will be able to query me. There's somebody here today. God will set you up for a breakthrough. And then God can give you deliverance without a struggle. In Mark chapter 1, from verse 23 to 27, Mark 1, 23 to 27, the Bible said Jesus came into a temple. There was a man there with an unclean spirit. And with just one word, and the demon departed. There was no struggle. There was no deliverance man praying all night. The man with an unclean spirit himself, he didn't even fast. He didn't pray. He didn't come to Jesus and say, I, I, I'm in bondage, set me free. God volunteered freedom for me. He got victory without a fight. This man had been coming to church only God knows for how long. But a day came and your day will come today. When he was set free without a struggle. There's another example. In Acts chapter 12. From verse 5 to 11. Acts 12 from verse 5 to 11. The Bible tells us. That Peter was in prison. And he was going to be killed the following morning. He was tied to two soldiers. The doors of the prison were firmly shut. There were guards outside the door. The enemies were sure there is no way he could escape. But Peter was sleeping. He did it. He wasn't praying. He wasn't sweating. He was in a very deep sleep. And then the Lord of hosts came in. The door opened. The Lord of hosts came in. And had to wake up Peter. He woke him up. The chain fell off. This, the soldiers were fast asleep. And I, we was to dress up, dress up. It, the Bible said he thought he was dreaming. Because when they got to the outside doors, the doors opened on their own accord. I would love to prophesy to somebody here today. Those who are tying you down, they will fall asleep. Every chain binding your hand, binding your feet, shall drop off today. And on your way out of here, Every door that has been shut against you shall open on their own accord. 
I'm sure I've told you the story before. We were having a, a Holy Ghost Congress in Oshogbo. And uh, we, at, at the stage, we were doing Bible study. And I was going around supervising. And then I saw some people gather around a, a young boy. And this young boy had a big problem. Since the day he was born, he had this urge to go into fire. He was attracted to fire. He wanted to go into fire. So the parents discovered very early and they kept it far away from the kitchen. So that day, the, the, he told the brethren and they wanted to cast the demon out of him. They surrounded him with rolled their sleeves. They were ready for battle. Then they saw me coming. They said, ah, praise God, bro. Bro is coming. In those days, we were all like that. You're either a bro or you're a sis. <laughs> so, <laughs> the bro is coming. And when I got there, he says, Sir, we want to cast out this demon out of this boy. Will you please join us? I said, of course. Provided you allow me to pray first. Because I saw the way they were getting ready. These people are ready for real battle. <laughs> so I prayed a simple prayer. I commanded the demon to leave. And then I began to go. Ah, they say, is that all? I said, what else? You want me to wait for the devil to pack his load? The word has gone out. It has to be obeyed. The program ended. And I was passing through Ife. And I decided to visit one of my boys. Lo and behold, the young boy that we were praying for was there in the house. He was the one who went to the kitchen to prepare my food. Because the word has already gone out. And the word is going out today to every one of you in bondage. In the name that's above every other name, be free. God can give you marriage without a struggle. He can give you fruit of the womb without a struggle. How do I know? In Genesis chapter 24, you can read from verse 1 to the end. Genesis 24 from verse 1 to the end. Isaac was enjoying himself. Just doing his father's business. He didn't know the father had made a plan and sent somebody to go and get a wife for him. The Bible says Isaac went for his stroll and then saw some people coming. Among them was a woman, beautiful lady. And the beautiful lady said, who is that man there? Uh, they said, that's your husband. Oh, so she came down from the house. And uh, the, the next thing you know, <laughs> Isaac was married. No struggle at all. He went for his throat. Now you've come for a stroll this morning. And your future partner will surface very, very soon. In 2 Kings chapter 4, 
From verse 8 to 17. Second King chapter 4. From verse 8 to 17. The Bible tells us of the great woman of Shunem. She wasn't expecting the fruit of the womb anymore. She had said, God had blessed me. He's made me great. I'm rich. I'm well connected. Ah, if the only thing I don't have is a child, no problem. So when the man of God said, nine months from now you have a son, he told the man of God, don't deceive me. Don't bother me, I'm, I'm satisfied. But nine months later, she was carrying a baby boy. I have good news for those of you. Trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Because you are here this morning. By the end of this year. You'll be carrying your children. Take note, I didn't say you will carry your child. I said you'll be carrying your children. I've told you the story before. And we had a program. Believe me honestly, we had the program here. Several years ago, we were about to finish. And I said everybody should ask God for something special. And there was this lady there who said to God, uh, I, will, I just want you to know I will serve you all the days of my life. I'm not going to bother to ask you for anything anymore. Because when I can have a child, I ask for a husband. One didn't show up. Now I can't have a child. But I don't bother you anymore. A few days later, a man came and said, Sister, don't say the Lord. You are my wife. She said to him, Go and pray again. Because I can't be your wife. Uh, the man said, Why not? It's because he asked him, Don't you want children? That one said, that's not the problem. He said, he said, he said because I am past the age of childbearing. The, the man said, ah, praise God. That, you must be the man, uh, the one. Because I already have children. My wife died. I'm not looking for more children. I'm looking for somebody who will help me take care of those I've already got. To cut a long story short, they got married. The first month after marriage, after marriage, the woman conceived. And <laughs> God will put laughter in the mouth of somebody. And when she was going to deliver, a set of twins, two boys, in the name that's above every other name, those of you who are single, this year, the wedding bell shall ring. For you, those of you who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, in the name of the one who said be fruitful and he multiply, this year, at least a set of twins for you. And then God can promote you without a struggle. God can promote you without a struggle. Consider Joshua chapter 1. From verse 1 to 8. Joshua 1 from verse 1 to 8. Joshua was a servant. 
of Moses. He was just a house help. Now then Moses died. And if anybody was thinking about becoming a successor of Moses, it wasn't Joshua. He never dreamt it. The God called him. He said, Moses is dead. Now you take over. I mean, Joshua trembled. God had to tell him three times. Be strong. Be of good courage. You will do the job. He did not plan for it. For Samuel chapter 16, from verse 11 to 13, for Samuel 16, 11 to 13, you know the story. If anybody thought of becoming a king, it is not David. Even the father will not present him. But this boy was in the farm doing the will of his father. And suddenly, Somebody came. David. David. Yes. You are wanted at home. What for? I don't know. There's one old man there. Looks like a prophet. He said, uh, nobody will sit down until you come. What have I done? Well, when you get there, we will find out. You know the rest of the story. He woke up a shepherd boy. He went to bed a king. There are some of you here today who are not expecting any promotion at all this year. In the name of the one who promotes, even your promotion will be accelerated. I've told you the story of one of my relations. Years ago, it was a, it was a cashier in, in the bank. And uh, somewhere here in, uh, in Yaba. And the, the boss, the chairman, wanted to send somebody to Akwapa to go and do something. And then he gave him I think 10 shillings in those days. Yeah, shillings. To go and take a taxi to go and do the job and come back. He waited, he couldn't say taxi. So he took a bus. We used to call it Kia Kia Bus in those days. And from Yaba to Apapa then was only three pence, one, one quarter of a shilling. Anyway, he went and returned by bus for six pence, half a shilling. And then he took the change to the chairman. Everybody in the office began to laugh at him. Stupid boy. What kind of Christian do you say you are? He gave you money for transport. How you went, how you came by, that's your business. He, he said, no. The boss said I should go by taxi. I couldn't find taxi. I went by bus. The, this is the change. They laughed at him. Months passed. And then all of a sudden, the boss decided that he was going to open a branch of the bank in Ilori. And he said, who can I trust? Who can I put in charge? And he remembered the cashier. The cashier who will return change over transportation. 
He's not going to cheat me in a lorry. He woke up a cashier. By the time he went to bed, he was manager of a branch. Promotion without a struggle. In the name that's above every other name. There is somebody here. Even before the end of this month, we will hear your testimony. Finally, God can give you victory without a fight. I mean, complete victory without a fight. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, Second Chronicles chapter 20, from verse 20 to 25, the Bible tells us that from mighty kings, three of them, they came against Jehoshaphat. They, 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 they were going to wipe him out. Jehoshaphat went before the Almighty God. <laughs> How do I handle this one? Yeah, God said, don't worry yourself. All you need to do is just sing and praise me. I will take care of the situation. You know the rest of the story. The enemies destroy themselves. And all their wealth was converted to Jehoshaphat. There's another story in 2 Kings chapter 19. 2 Kings chapter 19. You can read it from verse 1 to 37. One great king called Zenakeru came against the, the king of Israel and told the king as all other nations have already finished them all. These, these kings, these kings, they even have their gods that we can see. You have a God that nobody can see. He said, you are finished. Uh, the Almighty God said, don't, don't worry. I will take care of him. The Bible said, God sent just one angel. Just one angel. Fighting for just one night. And he finished 185,000 soldiers. Many of you never heard this story before. When we decided to move to redemption camp, to hold our first convention there, we, I mean, we went by faith. Everything we did was by faith. And we had a beautiful, beautiful convention. Shortly after the convention, they brought a woman down. Some, some, the, some of the people here will know who the woman was. Anyway, she was confessing before because she was under serious agony. We wanted to pray, say, hey, before you pray for me, you need to hear what I have to say. We heard that you were coming to this campground. And we decided to come ahead of you and take over the land. Three of us. Three major witches. We came ahead but before you arrived the angel of the Lord arrested us. Of the three 
One died immediately. One became a hunchback. The third one was the one who was confessing. We didn't know there were witches there. We didn't know anybody came to, to sabotage us. But there is a God called the Lord of hosts. He sent an angel ahead of us. Arrested the enemies and finish them. In the name that's above every other name. Enemies you know, enemies you don't know, daddy will take care of them today. That's why we have to close now. Because I know somebody is going to pray some very serious prayer today. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? There's only one answer to that question. Because when we ask that question, we have always said, nobody. I have always tell my children, look at your Bible very well. He just asked the question and put question mark. He didn't answer the question. If God is for you, the devil can be against you. He said, you receive the devil, the devil will flee. If God is for you, demons can be against you. No, no, no. He said, you have to cast them out. If God is for you, sickness can be against you. He sent his word and healed them. If God is for you, poverty can be against you because he said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. If God is for you, failure can be against you because the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then who can be against you? No, not a ballist. Not a witches and wizards. Because it is written, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And then who can be against you? Only yourself. If God says, I want to help you, and you say you don't need help, He won't force you. If God says, let us be friends, and you say, no, you want to be his enemy, he will leave you alone. If he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, and you say, I don't want to come, he won't force you. If he wants to give you victory without a fight, and you say you don't need him, he will leave you alone and see how you can do it on your own. I'm begging you this morning. If you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, come and do so now. Because if he invites you, if he invites you, and you refuse his invitation, he will leave you alone. And the enemy will finish the rest. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, I'm going to count from 1 to 15. Because of those of you who are in the gallery up there, but you must begin to come forward very quickly now. Come and surrender your life to Jesus. Let him save your soul. If God is for you, then you will get victory without a fight. I'm counting now. One.
two. And if you are coming, you have to come very quickly. The choice is yours. Nobody is going to force you. God himself will not force you. Three. Four. I think some people should be clapping, if only because you know you are going to have victory without a fight. Five. Six. Seven. Those of you who are clapping, you will never be defeated again. Nine. Ten. Thirteen. Fourteen. Those of you are on the way, just keep coming, keep coming. Make sure you get here before I finish praying. I will wait a little bit for you. But keep coming, keep coming. Now those of you who are in front, you cry unto the Almighty God and ask him to please save your soul. Tell him you will surrender completely to him so that he can become your ally. 
Ask him to forgive all your sins and receive you into the family of God. Ask him to give you a brand new beginning. Tell him you will do his will. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. And those of you on the way, pray the same prayer. And pray the same prayer as you come. And the rest of us, please let's stretch our hands towards these our brothers and intercede for them and pray that the almighty God who saved our souls we save their own souls also. Pray for them, brethren. Intercede for them. And those of you on the way, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. I will pray very soon. Make sure you get here before I finish praying. I can see, see many of you on the way. Just keep coming, keep coming. This is your day of salvation. It's your day of salvation. I'm asking him, Lord, have mercy on me, save my soul. Save my soul. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. Forgive my sins, O oh Lord. And I will live the rest of my life for you. Keep coming, keep coming. I can see, see you. Please, keep coming. I wait 10 seconds more. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I just want to thank you for your word. I want to give you all glory and honor for these people who have responded. You promised, O oh Lord, that whosoever will come unto you, you will know why cast out. Please, Lord, receive them, have mercy on them, save their soul. Wash them in your blood. Write their names in the book of life and give them a brand new beginning. Please, Father, from now on, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. Thank you, my Lord. And Father, I'm committing everyone here today to your hands. As we cry unto you, we want victories without a fight. Physically, give us victory. Maritally, give us victory. Financially, give us victory. Over every force of darkness, give us victory. Over stagnation, Father, give us victory. Every prayer your children shall pray here today, before the sun set, Lord, turn each one to a testimony. Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, those of you who have come forward, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Now, I rejoice with you because from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your name, your address, and your prayer request. So the counselors will give you a card. If you haven't got one, just keep waving your hand till they give you one. I want you to fill the card. Give me the information I need. And I promise you I'll be praying for you. That you stay where you are for now. Because all of us want to pray together. I've asked God to answer your prayers. It's now up to you to pray. So every one of us here. This being a very special day, we have come right into the open 
to go and meet the Almighty God. Lift your voice to Him loud and clear. And say, Father, Lord of hosts, give me victory today. Victory without a fight. Over sickness. Over poverty. Over barrenness. Over failure. Over stagnation. Please, Lord, give me victory. Without a fight. Today. 